Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one I'm going to be talking about why I think jungler is the least skilled it has ever been. And this is very heavily due to jungle pathing and creativity being dead or not as rewarding as it once was. That being said, don't freak out, I'm not jumping on the negative cesspool that is the creator swamp where everyone just makes videos about why everything was better back in the day because I've taken off my nostalgia goggles and I simply want to give you, all of you, seven ways to salvation in this jungle guide. We can fix these problems, we can discuss why they're happening and why the best best junglers in the world, all your most favorite challenger junglers and professional players still are the best because of their ability to adapt and have this Python creativity. And as you all know, that is kind of my bread and butter and how I approach coaching and jungling. And if you want me to be live coaching over your shoulder, telling you what to look for, what matchups are great, what lanes to gank, I collaborated with Zarda GG to bring you all a supremely high quality volleyball and jungling guide. Now, yes, the guide is for volleyball, but I wrote 10,000 words, not only about him and his matchups and how to play it, but also about jungling in general, all the philosophies you see on this channel put into a live companion coaching guide that will allow you simply to become a better jungler. It will take you from beginner to intermediate to advanced and you can jump in whenever you like. There are over 80 games of learning and once you've done that, I will simply keep being the voice in your head that helps you get through games. It also provides you a gank ability assessment at the beginning of games, how to set up your game plans, control objectives, and I will be giving away a few free codes for this guide in the comments. Make sure you tag it hashtag Volibear Savant. And if you decide to go further, there is a 20% discount you can get with code Vakai. Right, so why am I being a little bit more negative with the marketing in this video, even if it is still technically an improvement guide? Well, that's because I believe it should not need to be made, but it has to be made. And yes, I'm attacking this whole concept of first full clears and how it's basically boosting junglers removing the ability to critically think and come up with unique strategies to basically make the role strong and to counter other junglers when they do surprising things. Ultimately, the full clear jungle meta has made junglers worse. It has removed creativity and critical thinking from the role and in this video we will discuss why and how those junglers who still have this edge will always be the better jungler. Ever since the end of season 9, we've talked about this in the Scuttlecrab documentary, I talked about the creativity needed to overcome certain metas, level 2 ganking, vertical jungling, all the ways we had to think about the jungle just to survive in the early phases and then to accentuate our strengths to get to the point that we could carry games. This happened to a degree in season 9, but then season 10 came around, 2 minute spawn timers, eventually people started focusing on quantity over quality. Yes, you could use that as a small example, of the league content on YouTube, but I mean that people were focusing on rinse clearing, getting six supervisors without any interaction on the map. Sure, we had our set and volleyball meta for a bit, but once people realized, hold up, why are we doing this? Ganking is risky. If we don't get rewarded, we just get screwed over by farming junglers who did nothing. So why don't we join the pool, get 315 full clears, get crabs, and really it made my mind feel like it had actual crabs having to watch this for a year. And then we just rinse clear and make sure we use our level spikes, gold spikes, and itemization spikes to carry every game. This led to the ultimate crescendo of boredom, Udir vs Hecarim perpetually. They would just farm first, whoever could get to the crab first won, otherwise you reset get the other crab. If you had lane prior, maybe you got double crabbed or did the double crabbing. But this disease of pathing that just became formulaic, cookie cutter, and boring really has taken over junglers. And although recently the meta changed because they nerfed the experience, they increased the camp spawn timers to 2 minutes 15. Junglers are not thinking about the game enough, they're not thinking about their pathing at all phases in the early and the mid game to take over wins and play properly. And that is the first ultimate thing. Why must I be creative? Well, because guess what? When you're creative and do unique things, when you do things that other junglers don't expect, you hold the upper hand. Jungling is all about holding the upper hand strategically. This Korean Shin Shao decided to go for early ganks by ignoring his blue buff entirely. He just made sure he got the grump for level three. Now he can go gank, repeat gank, fall back to his blue and his wolves, why did he do that though? Pure and simple, he simply knew that he didn't need the blue buff because he'd have full mana and HP regeneration from the Grum. Not only does that mean the edge camp is going to be up sooner, which is the highest value camp on the map, it also means that he can take his blue afterwards, delay or prevent any second buff spawn invades that may occur down the line, and of course have his blue longer into the early game if he decides to have some extended sequences, repeat gank, bottom lane, what have you. And that's why this first section is about using creativity for aggressive pathing. Yes, it's a 5 camp meta, yes, you can still fall Clear. But those Rek'Sai, Elise's, Shaco's, Shinchao's that you're seeing in the meta, they're not really just scaling by farming. They're looking to do a lot of action early to surprise enemy junglers, to force them to play their game. This works for Volibear as well, and I have a very important point about this later on in the video, and you'll see exactly what I mean by using this particular aggressive creativity to entirely counter the formulaic 5-6 camp clearers that haven't gotten over the nerfs earlier in the season. 
Secondly, we can use creativity to be safe and to outsmart. As you all know, I like to play Zyra Jungle. I like to play Orn Jungle. No, these are not my try-hard picks, but I can still play them in high elo, and I have done. But that requires me to understand that as soon as they see me as Zyra, I know I'm getting invaded, so how do I maximize my power things to ensure my safety and reach those 315 crab spawn timers? I don't decide to go, oh, you know what, I'm gonna go blue grump walls wrapped as red. Oh no, there's a Java and that sucks. So what I started doing is realizing I don't really need double pots. I could just do a control ward, slap it on the buff, be like a fiddlesticks, take one pot in case my plant RNG sucks. If I'm against an invader, I can track where they began. If they got a leash, I can go buff to buff and then reverse clear down. If I know it's warded against any particular jungler and they might invade my red immediately, I can go blue, red, Krugs. It gives me level three. And if I wanted to gank bottom lane first, then I can do so. Very much like the first point where you saw the Korean jungler ignoring his blue to get the Grump just so he can get those level 3 gangs, I do the same as Zyra, but I always flex around the order in which I do my 5 cam. I do it so I don't get invaded, I do it so that I'm basically guaranteed at least one crab early, I can counter gank if I want to, or as it usually happens, I get the first gank off by cutting out that 5th cam. Now this doesn't have to just be for off-mana junglers, if you play a jungler that's countered against any of these things that you're afraid of, you have to think deeply about not only which lanes do I want to gank and what's my early game planning, how do I avoid the enemy jungler while denying them the possibility of getting a lead? All of these things factor into your creativity and when I'm playing support, I am not seeing either of these two things. Look at this Trundle, he's against a Giovanna. What do you think you should do in this situation? He's gonna start on the red side, what do you expect? Go ahead, take a moment. Do you think he's gonna do a four camp up? Do you think he's gonna three camp invade? Is he gonna do a three camp gank? If you were thinking along those lines or you said something else that isn't what I'm about to say, then you won't be creative enough because you weren't thinking about the matchup changing your decisions. Matchups must impact your thinking. So very clearly the Shivana gets leashed on the blue side and the Trundle takes his red first. Now if you decided buff buff Grump into a red invade, I'm kind of with you there. The Trundle decides to do something a bit more creative, a bit more unique and unexpected. He decides to waltz into her jungle knowing she's going to be on Grump and try and kill her. Unfortunately, she's able to smite away the Grump, get healing, but her flash is burned. So what our adventure's hairy red-nosed troll decides to do is, you know, take her wolves. He doesn't fall back to his raptors, he doesn't fall back to his blue side. He runs into her red side jungle, beats her out, kills her, and takes her stuff. He thought about the matchup, he thought about the fact that he very easily defeats a Shivana. he knows what she wants to accomplish in the early game, he knows what he wants to accomplish in the early game, and he decided, you know what, I can do this, and I'm going to do this. When's the last time you did something like this, thought very deeply about it, and made game winning plays? From this, the game was won. And that's the fourth point, stop the cookie cutter nonsense that's predictable. And this builds up very simply. Now, what happens if you were the Shivana and you didn't get some kind of cheese like this, you didn't get invaded like this? Yes, there is inherent risk, but if he considers the matchup of the Shivana properly, he knows where she's gonna be and he knows that he wins. This Hecarim decides I'm gonna start blue side sequence down. The Lee Sin decides you know what I'm actually gonna gank first and I know exactly what you're going to do. So he knows that the Hecarim is going to go to the Krugs. Much like my warding video I put out his raptor camp was warded so they knew that the Lee Sin did red Krugs raptors going to the blue side. Instead of defaulting to this cookie cutter 5 camp he cuts the map, ganks mid, gets a kill, knows exactly where the Hecarim is and doesn't hesitate in applying the pressure. Kills him on the Krugs, and yes, this isn't always the best move. You must pay deep attention to lane priority and how you're going to get out, but the result here is still very, very good, and it was only made possible because the Hecarim was focused on a full clear, rinse clearing, and getting a crab without thinking about what the Leeson was doing or wanted to do. Predictable and punished. And the next reason why junglers are the least skilled they've ever been is because they're not thinking deeply, and they are failing to realize that enemy jungle suppression is literally in our job description. Adapt, cut off, react, rotate, prevent, counter gank. This idea that we should just full clear and then scale inevitably and make a few ganks around the ultimate, I really don't like it and it's created this raw laziness about power thing. Cause look at the Hecarim, he dies at Krugs. He knows that Leeson did red side into mid lane gank into an invade and died. He knows that the Leeson has three camps on the bottom side plus the bottom crab available to him. He also knows that his bottom lane has a bit of a push advantage due to the double buffs from the Zyra. He takes his Krugs, he gets pinged at the tribushes warded from the invade, and instead of thinking, you know what, I can actually be here to counter gank, I know the Lee Sin is 100% on the bottom side. Instead of thinking about the gank or the counter gank, he's only thinking about the crab. He did not consider what the enemy jungler was doing. He did not consider about suppressing him through counter ganking. He did not think. And so he dies once more. What he should have done is told his bottom lane, listen, Lee Sin's bottom side, please pay attention to that place careful as you can without dying. I'm going to take the top crab and then counter jungle his Krugs and Raptors as he spends his time on the bottom side 
taking tier 1 camps. It also means if the Hecarim does this, he has free reign to gank the top lane, to gank the mid lane, to perhaps just fall back to his blue side, and then sequence down level 6 and gank for his bottom laners. He does none of this, he's frequently on the wrong side, his back timings are not off with his laners, the leasing gets double advantage, it's doomed. And that's the problem. Jungle diff is being created by junglers not thinking creatively about the game, not thinking about how to eke these advantages out, like Canyon, like Kuz. What did they do best? Really high level pathing, unique pathing through fog of war by tracking the enemy jungler, by swapping their objectives around, by sequencing in the downtime. It creates a jungle diff by extension because junglers, even if you're ganking top lane, it can have implications on the bottom lane. If you're ganking mid lane, it can have implications on the top side. Every action you do as a jungler has a ripple effect throughout the map, which is why people use the phrase jungle difference. Is it always fair? No. Is it sometimes the laner's fault? 100%. But please understand, with every decision you make, there is always an outcome that someone gets affected in the opposite way, because either the jungler's making that equal and opposite map move, or you chose to let them struggle in a rough situation. Again, I'm not saying it's your fault, I'm just saying if you decide to think about the game more dynamically, and follow everything I'm saying in this video, these occurrences will happen way less frequently for you, and you will be the jungle difference. I mean, look at this Hecarim, his bottom lane wins 2v2, great, how excited would you be as a jungler? And instead of understanding that they need to back right now to get an item advantage that helps them win the lane further, he decides to go for a crab fight. Yes, of course, he kills the Echo, but he decides to overchase, he gives a double buff to the Zillion, he doesn't understand that his bottom lane has this advantage, they just want to reset and use it further, and that because the enemy bottom lane died, they will be on the map sooner with more items spent. It's a bad fight, he should not have taken it. And that's the final point, laners must be kept guessing. This is the seventh and final thing that's very, very important. Now, I will say full disclaimer that laners seemingly can't track junglers whatsoever. Anyone who plays lane and jungle has a severe advantage over anyone else in the game, which is why I think junglers, you need to learn lane, and laners, you need to try some jungle. There should be no reason why an Orianna dies multiple times to Rek'Sai early because she's blindly pushing and not using her wards. There should be no reason also why a jungler who has laners that are pushed in can never get a gank off or can never counter gank. Or even if his laners are winning and he complains, well, that's not gankable. Well, you can dive, you can lane gank, you can track and counter gank again. You thought about a lane gank? It's pretty useful. By mixing things up, especially in those reverse clears, they know you got leashed on the bottom side, they don't know you're reverse clearing, you end up bottom lane when you start a bottom lane for a nice early gank, which is what I talked about in a recent video as well. When you keep junglers guessing, when you keep laners guessing, it throws out the enemy jungler's game plan, he now has to read and react, all of a sudden he's Viego being vertical jungled by a Zyra winning the bottom lane, he's denied a whole bunch of experience and now he gets pushed off of his red buff by a Zyra jungle. Again, I'm not saying you should use this champion, it's really, really bad objectively, but I would do this with Volibear all the time when I'm tryouting or with Rek'Sai. Ultimately, junglers are not doing this on a mass scale. They are simply doing a 5-6 camp clear, they're not thinking dynamically about adapting, they're not trying to deny enemy junglers, and because they're not keeping their laners guessing, their ganking success is significantly stifled as well, which is why, again, I made that video last week. Creativity in your jungling creates creativity in ganking, which, guess what, gets you fed and disables laners. Think about these seven things, they are your way to salvation, that is what makes junglers that are at the top of the ladder better than the others, they are not in the cookie business, they are not autopiloting their jungling, they are thinking very dynamically about the game, they are playing aggressively and intelligently, and don't think, oh this changes the higher up you go, maybe someone's D2, D1 and they can do this, no, they really cannot. The Diamond 1 and Diamond 2 junglers, they are actually some of the biggest culprits because they know how to do one strategy really, really well, and as soon as they reach someone like Canyon who kind of deciphers it and counters it, they're kind of screwed, they can't think outside of the box. And no, I'm not complimenting your shocker mains, Q is not thinking outside of the box. And yes, it does happen in Master Plus as well. But there you have it, hopefully a little bit of a rant on why I think junglers are not performing to the best of their ability, why I think the jungle meta does allow you to actually do so. Best of luck bringing some creativity to your jungling once more. I hope it helps all of you perhaps go into a replay and think about what you could have done differently to take control of the game. I just want you all to be the jungle difference, climb fast, climb hard, and please stop taking 3v1 crab fights when you have no prior. I'm getting a headache from having to watch this footage. Please do like, share and comment if you did enjoy and learn something. Head to the gameplay channel for all of your champion needs. Don't forget the Volibear, Zarda, GG, Jungle Guide, and Coaching Companion is there for you to download. Appreciate every sub that sticks around during the tough times of jungle. I'm just here to try and show you, you can be great again. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.